Okay. Uh, uh, nothing like um, facing another top 15 opponent. Uh, really, really excited about that. Uh, this one's uh, Iowa State's. Uh, they're playing well. I mean, it's very well documented. Everybody that watches any TV or gets on Twitter or whatever understands what they've done the last <clears throat> the last month. Um, you know, ever since uh, that Thursday night game against Texas, they're sitting there at two and two. <clears throat> um, you know, and then uh, had the quarterback change, headed to uh, Oklahoma. I mean, that's not a very favorable situation for anybody, and they've done nothing but have success since then. Um, so, you know, give them all the credit in the world. Give their coaches credit, their players credit. Um, the whole program uh, credit for being in a situation where they're sitting here at 6-2 and two and 13th, 14th in the country or whatever it is, and very deservingly so. <clears throat> you know, lost a tough one to Iowa early, which that one can always go back and forth. But, um, you know, and then the Texas situation that we all that we all watched. But since then, they've played so good. Uh, the, the win at Oklahoma, as we know, is extremely hard. <clears throat> Shutting out... Uh, Kansas, you know, winning in Lubbock, which is always hard, and then basically shutting out TCU. Uh, so, you know, playing playing well as a whole team, uh, not just one side. They're playing well as a whole team. You look offensively, um, nobody takes care of the ball better than they are, you know, made since they've made the switch to Kemp, who uh, we recruited him, know a lot about him, big, tall guy that can throw the ball extremely well from – uh, Maslin, Ohio, um, but uh, does a great job of taking care of the ball, just doesn't screw up. <clears throat> He's got three or four, six, four, six, five, six, six receivers that he can throw to that they high point a lot. Obviously, the one that everybody knows about is, is Lazard's been there for a, a decade, it seems like. Uh, but uh, they got more than just him that they can throw to. Uh, they got, you know, a couple other big, tall guys that are starting to come onto the scene, big tight end. The Allen kid, I think, is going to be a really good player. <clears throat> The Ryan kid, number 19, uh, is an interesting story. That guy makes all kinds of plays. Uh, is their best special teams player. Best punt returner I've seen since Wes Walker, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, so he's dynamic with everything that he does. <coughs> um, covers punts. Uh, has, I think, pinned five inside the five. So just as a good all-around player that does a lot of – a lot, a lot of good things. It, it starts with their running back. Uh, Montgomery is as good as I've seen, has made more people miss and has broke more tackles uh, than I've seen yet this year. And we've played a lot of good backs. <laughs> so he's, he, you know, they give it to him about 20 times a game. Uh, and then they got Warren backing him up, which everybody would like to have him as well. So uh, big up front, you know, play hard. Uh, it's, it's the same you know, it's the same story regardless of what side you're saying with them. They're well coached. They have a lot of older guys that have bought into what they're doing, and they're playing very mistake-free, very smart football. <clears throat> Don't get penalized, number one in the league, and in, in, in penalties, number one in the league, and lack of turnovers, turnover margin, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, a ton of improvement on defense. Um, you know, they, they, they're, they're multiple with what they do. Uh, you know, they get into four down fronts. They get into three down fronts. The, the, you know, they'll, they'll move their people all around, uh, create confusion. They drop eight a lot. Uh, probably, um, you know, big, thick guys up front that just hold gaps and play their tail off. <clears throat> you know, everybody wants to talk about the story with uh, Joel Lanning, which is deservingly so. I mean, that guy's got to, at this point, have played more snaps in college football than anybody ever uh, with how much he's played offensively, which now how much he's played defensively. He plays special teams as well. Uh, it's a great story, deservingly so, and makes is just a ton of tackles. Uh, the guy next to him, the Spears kid, has been Big 12 Defense Player of the Week, what, twice? So he's all over the place and, and makes a ton of tackles as well. <clears throat> their, their safeties, all, all fifth-year seniors, um, you know, Edwards and Wilkerson and the one everybody wants to talk about, the Cotton Moya, they're all three the same, and they're all, they'll all they run, and they, they're sure tacklers, and they're tough, and they cover well. Um, they're not giving up any yards or points, so they're, they're, that, that's that. <clears throat> Special teams-wise, um, 
best collectively the best specialists we've faced collectively they are uh their punter you know hits it exactly where he, they want him to hit it um operation time's unbelievable uh place kickers you know almost perfect he's missed a couple uh, of field goals that missed by this much <clears throat> so he's solid um the kickoff guy kicks it in the end zone mentioned the punt returner the kickoff guys Warren in their coverage units are as good as as can be very sound very smart very tough very um um uh, you know just uh, just an overall really good football team so um we got some work to do we've got to we've got to play well and we've got we've got to improve on the things that we didn't do well last week if we if we want to win this game uh, I, I know our guys will be motivated to play, motivated to practice, <clears throat> to get a couple of things fixed uh, to where we can go out there and we can compete hard and get a victory this Saturday, which we fully expect to do. Questions? Can you turn on the tape by Iowa State? Is it anything fancy or they just do what they do really well? No, nah, they're well coached. Uh, you know, they, they, they're... You know, that, that group's been together for a while. I know that it's second year at Iowa State, but the majority of them came over from Toledo. And, you know, it's just a bunch of Ohio guys that are really good football coaches. You know, Matt Matt's, uh, you know, his pedigree everybody knows. I mean, he's grown up in it and does a great job. <clears throat> Had a lot of his guys that have came with him to – to develop this, I mean, they're 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 multiple offensively. They they want to run the ball. They shift a lot. They motion a lot. They create matchups. They got big receivers that they can uh, that can make plays when they're covered. Uh, it, they're, they're well coached. You know, defensively, they get into a bunch of different things and <clears throat> get guys in the right position. Uh, you know, they're they're disciplined with what they do. Iowa State's always kind of been that team. They've always kind of been a very hardworking, disciplined, overachieving bunch. Um, you add that with with some top end players. You add that with uh, with with uh, really good coaching. Um, a lot of fifth year seniors. You, you you have the makings of a good football team. That's what they are. Is a good football team. You always say you try not to get too high when you win or too low when you lose. How do you approach coming out of last week? I would think determined. Uh, I mean, if 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 you can't be determined to get out there and and coach harder and play harder and you know practice harder and <clears throat> get to a point where you play harder and and it, I, then why you do it? I mean that that was you know we 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 got beat. They beat us. You know my my assessment of not having the right mentality and I always kind of pinpoint the run game just because that's where you can kind of see it on the stat sheet <clears throat> but there's examples everywhere for every position of not being not having the right mentality that you need to win um you know everything's I mean the first thing back there on that thing is toughness I mean, it's I mean it's the number one in I don't care who what program you're talking about <clears throat> yeah, I could I could argue. I it, it's probably it doesn't really matter what sport you talk about. If you don't have that, then you know it, you're going to have a hard time being successful. Um, we, you know, and, and you can look at everything that happened from blocking to tackling to sustaining blocks to getting off blocks to running hard, not running hard. <clears throat> yeah, all that stuff. We just we didn't play as hard as we need to. You know, bottom line. You know, and then it gets into the the turnover aspect of it. I mean, it's good to get turnovers, and we did a good job of forcing some turnovers. <clears throat> Can argue we forced five with a block punt. You know, I mean, there are some things that happen. But if you're not if you're not if you don't have the right mentality to be able to take that and play football, then you're not gonna you're you're not gonna be able to capitalize on that stuff. So I would think determined. I'm as I'm as anxious as anybody to see the determination of our team moving forward. And how much of your job is the mental part, and, and where do you get the expertise from? Of, you know, as a coach. I mean, Twenty years of coaching, uh, it kind of, kind of does it. Uh, spending more time with it now than I did when all I worried about was was drawing plays and getting first downs. <clears throat> you know, part of the CEO aspect of it is 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 the overall mentality of your whole team. Um, you know, so, 
you know, there's 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 individuals that you need to spend a little bit more time with, but uh, just messaging moving forward is going to be important. Did he talk about toughness? You've done that for a few weeks. How, how do you instill that two thirds of the way through the season? Get it to where you want it to be. I don't know. Uh, go out and practice is the only way I know how to. So. <clears throat> Things have been addressed with, with staff and with expectations of, of each and every one of their, their players. Um, it all starts with me. i got to be in the right frame of mind when this meeting starts here in a couple hours and, you know, how, how we uh, uh, teach and, and um, you know, go outside and, and, and prepare. Um, you know, got to get out there and work hard. There's, there, there's, there's no easy way to do it. <clears throat> Roll the sleeves up and get out there and, and practice your tail off. That's about it. When Will and some of the guys aren't as clued in as they've been all year, there seemed like there were a couple plays, you know, balls were on the way and guys weren't looking. Is that just pressure disrupting it? Is in the, in the rhythm getting off a little bit? It's the same mentality I've been talking about. It, you know, the, if you think for a minute, being being having a, a mental, mentally and and physically tough football player, <clears throat> they run routes fast. They 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 break off resistance. They attack the ball. They they they're fast. You know, then you have up front guys having to lock things down and and create space to be able to make that throw. <clears throat> and then you can have you can you can go as far as and we put a lot on will. There's no question, a lot on will. You know, but there's a toughness that needs to exist with the quarterback in the pocket of of setting your feet and being mentally tough and working the pocket like he's done great all year, and setting the feet with proper technique and throwing the ball like he knows how to throw. It's everybody, and if, if so, if the whole team it was not in the right frame of mind mentally, that's a hundred percent on me. So the timing that didn't exist with our pass game last week, and we can sit here and talk about the run game if you want to. You know it's going to come out of my mouth. Uh, there's a toughness that has to be able to exist in the passing game as well. You know, receivers got to line up the right way and come off the ball and fight through people that are going to try to cover you and, and attack the ball and create separation and keep your feet and, and go vertical. Didn't see that out of one of our receivers last week. They were every bit as bad as, as anybody up front when it came to having to protect or having to run block the appropriate way. There's, there's nobody that I can excuse offensively. It's everybody that lined up. So what do you see other run game? It's with not, us not being very physical or tough or whatever it is. And you can say, well, <clears throat> you know, uh, that's because the old line doesn't, run block the way we want to. It does It does not stop there. My finger is not pointing at the five guys up front. It kind of starts there because you can really gauge it at the point of attack. And we can get to defense if you want. I can say the same thing about basically everybody on that side as well. Um, you know, uh, the point of attack is important, okay? But then there's an the aspect of the running backs understanding things and hitting it the right way and running hard and it's okay to break a tackle every now and then. The, the guy that we're about to face breaks a whole lot of them, <clears throat> you know, and get hit and move forward, All right? And then there's receivers that are involved that, you know, once the back gets out kind of in the open, it's okay for those guys to run fast and put their hands on people and block people. That's how you spring people. So it's the same mentality, and again, this whole every every bit of this is is 100% on my shoulders. The way that we approach practice, the way that we go through practice, it, it needs to be better moving forward. I, I don't think we're far off. We've had that mentality a, a lot here over the last three, four years, <clears throat> and we did earlier in the year as well. Um, we we got to get it back now. I think with last week you talked about Alfred Rashid, but what about David Long? I hate to sit here and talk bad about that kid. And I'm not talking bad about anybody. I'm just as a collectively a whole group, the mentality that needs to e exist. Um, that I mean, he, you know, we, we've been bragging about David for quite some time. They had a great freshman year. 
Um, you, you know, lost them in the summer, which we felt like we lost our, you know, what we felt like was probably our best defensive player, you know, and then he comes back, you know, on time <clears throat> and probably took him a couple of weeks to kind of get his feet underneath him a little bit and, it, I mean, played outstanding. I mean, you can't block him. You know, he keeps his feet. You know, he's getting banged up and he still makes tackles. Uh, yeah, outstanding performance for him. Um, you know, probably need, you know, and I've been bragging about Al all year, and Al's been playing well. Uh, there's nine other positions out there that if those nine other positions don't play like that, we're going to give up 50. But that's about, that's about the bottom line. You can't play defense with one or two guys. Can't. And, you know, everything starts up front. You know, we got some young kids that need to, they, they they need to not be young anymore, which you know it's it's unfortunate and it's hard to have to play with young guys. Uh, we 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 need all those guys to play hard, play physical, be tough, grow up, man up. <clears throat> Starts up front, but then we need the back end to play better as well. Way too many missed tackles. Way too many guys stuck on blocks. Then how many of your quarterbacks can play linebacker? Anybody come to mind? Well, it wouldn't be Clint. <laughs> he was not, <laughs> he not number one. Uh, I hadn't had many. Um, I think Skyler has that mentality. He had that mentality. I mean, he he was tough and physical and smart and could run. Um, the the landing the landing kid is a different breed. <clears throat> he's a different breed, you know. I mean, he's was tough at quarterback. If you're not tough at quarterback, I doubt you can have a chance of being tough at linebacker. But he, he, he. Everything I'm saying about the mentality that needs to exist, he clearly has it. Um, you know, don't know him, but I'm assuming he's a pretty smart kid as well. <clears throat> Sees a lot. I mean, probably the, you know, we've talked a lot about David Sills and his quarterback background allows him to be able to do some smart things running routes. I'm sure that helps him as well. You know, just kind of seeing things and studying film, sees things happen probably before they happen, which I think Al has a lot of those qualities as well. High football IQ. Dana, listening to you talk about the mentality stuff and, and how it's existed, I'm assuming that you expected it to happen this year, just kind of continuity. Do you have it and get away from it? Do you not have it? Are you not able to? I don't have those answers, honestly. Um, it's not like we've quit talking about it. You know, I don't think that we've practiced a whole lot different. Uh, you know, we got we got some inexperienced guys that that need to grow up and do a little better. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it, 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 and it's an excuse that nobody wants to hear, but it hurts losing probably six fifth-year seniors that are O-line guys, D-line guys, especially over the course of the season. Um, probably showed last week for the first time.